Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. My name's Lee and I'm a DIY electric skateboard builder. And yes, in this episode, we are gonna be taking a look at the Flipsky Dual 4.2 Smart. Now, I want to preface this video by saying I do have quite extensive experience with a range of ESCs that have been out over the years, starting with the Humble Fockbox. Now, I have a pair of these in my first ever DIY board, the Duck, and they've been going strong ever since. I also have one more here, uh, which is unusual these days to actually find these things. They're getting to be pretty rare. They've all blown up or whatever ended up in landfill, I guess. Also the Zenith and before that the Foxbox Unity, all the way up to the Stormcore, the Spintend. I've seen quite a lot of them. Um, so I hope that I can do this video some good justice. I also want to say that Flipsky did send me two of these over for review for free and uh, I'm going to be giving one of them away. So stick by for the end of the video and there'll be a question for you to answer so you can win one of these and that I nearly whacked myself in the eye. That was ridiculous. So look out in the video for a question you've got to answer. Put the answer in the comments and I will pick one of you guys randomly to win one of these Dual 4.2 Smarts. So what is the Dual 4.2 Smart? Well, it is one of a new generation of ESCs that Flipsky have developed. They didn't always look like this one. This is what the old generation of ESCs looked like from Flipsky. And to be honest, they do have mixed reviews. Um, it seems to be if you got a good one, it would last you absolutely forever, but not everybody got a good one. Now this ESC and all of the other ones in the same line of products seem to have had a bit of a redesign. They don't only do this in a dual, they also do a single and they also do a version six one as well, which is a little bit more powerful. Um, but yeah, I have the version 4.1 and it is different. I think this is a version 4 old one and this is the version 4 new one and it has had a significant redesign. And there is a trick in this ESC that I haven't seen on any other ESCs before. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist, I've just never seen it. And um, we'll be talking about that in a little bit. But the ESC itself is a 12S safe, dual ESC uh, up to 50 amps uh, per motor continuously and the the best thing about this or in my opinion one of the best things about this is the fact that it now has a smart switch so it has an e-switch built in it has the anti-spark circuit all built into this so you can turn the board on and off with a momentary switch which is pretty nice it's 336 dollars which may seem a little bit on the expensive side but if this is a good ESC then it's worth investing a little bit more money in in a good ESC. Um, you might look at these specs and think, well, I could get a Zenith and that would be 80 amps continuous for around about the same price. But actually, hopefully this has been under spec by Flipsky and it can be ran a little bit harder than that. And we will be trying to find that out later. Now, as for the physical properties of this ESC, and please excuse the fact that I'm using a tape measure. My calipers have seen some serious action recently. I've just discovered they're out of battery. Looks like 121 wide. 89 millimeters long and about 21 millimeters high so it's actually quite compact it's not as compact as some others i'll put it against the zenith it's a little bit bigger tiny bit not much though and it's coming in at 285 grams but it doesn't have any connectors on it at the moment it has a hard aluminium body around the outside, which is really nice and feels really premium. And it has what you might think at first is a heat sink on the bottom, but it's not actually a heat sink. This um, ESC doesn't really have an extra heat sink because the PCB on this ESC is made out of aluminium. The substrate is aluminium. Now, normal PCBs are made of like a fibrous material. It doesn't matter what color they are, green, white, red, blue, black, they're made of like a fibrous material and that doesn't conduct heat very well. So normally you put a heat sink on the power stage to transfer the heat out of the FETs and into an external heat sink. Now this doesn't have an external heat sink as standard, but with this large aluminum uh, base plate or PCB base plate, it's going to be interesting to see how this handles the thermals. Personally, I think it's going to do really, really well. And I think that this ESC would be is probably going to be really nice with a heatsink on it. But um, I do wonder whether it can do 50 amps continuous with both sides going at the same time without a extra heatsink on it. It's going to be super interesting. I have no idea how it's going to fare, but I have a feeling that once you strap a heatsink to this thing, it's going to be phenomenal thermally. So let's get it open. There are um, seven screws on the underside. 
I'm going to get these open and we'll have a look inside at uh, what's going on in this ESC. Right, okay, I've just removed the seven screws on the underside of this thing and let's um, flip it over and take a look and take the, the top plate off, okay. So the top plate isn't a heatsink. It's not acting like a heatsink at all. It's purely um, decorative. Um, yeah, it's a really nice thing to do actually. I quite like having the, the metal top. Let's have a look at the PCB. Okay, so this is interesting. So what we've got here is we have three PCBs um, together here. We have, first of all, that aluminium uh, PCB at the bottom, and that has the power stage on it. It has the FETs on there. Looks like four FETs per phase wire, which is really nice as well. And that looks about it. So it looks like the power stage only is on the aluminium PCB. Then we have another PCB sort of attached to the bottom half of this aluminium PCB and that's the logic circuit. So that looks like it's got the motor drivers on it, the CAN bus chip, the USB chip, all that stuff, the stuff that handles all of the ports, that's on this, like a fiber, uh, like a normal fiber PCB, which is stuck down to the aluminium PCB. And then there's this third PCB on top, which is again, a normal PCB. And that has the anti-spark circuit on it. So it has the power switch up there. Um, has the input capacitors as well, which there are quite a few of them. Um, yeah, it's really tidy in here. There are some marks. Can you see that? I don't know if this thing's been conformal coated or not, but it looks like it, doesn't it? I don't know. It's not shiny enough to have been conformal coated, but definitely has some flux marks. I would say they're going to be sold to flux. You can sort of see them. Can you see them between the capacitors? I don't know if you can see that. Is that to see okay that's not a problem really no solder balls in here the soldering all looks good apart from a couple of those on the phase wires they look a bit cold looks like they've been soldered well but i don't know that looks like a cold joint to me maybe not i can't pull the um the leads off so and that's about all there is inside really i mean this thing still weighs almost as much as the whole thing did because this weighs almost nothing and i don't think this is doing anything thermally though one thing i'm not keen on is these these bus bars this is the positive and which one's which that's the positive bus bar and that's the negative bus bar and it's just bringing this power in and down to the bottom pcb but those i mean this is anodized but still I guess they sit far enough off it that that's not going to be a problem. It's impossible to tell though. Let's see when that goes on. I would like to see some foam or, or something on top of those bus bars, but I guess they've done their homework and they aren't going to touch, so that's all right. Okay then, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put the lid back on this and then I'm going to introduce you to a new bit of kit that I've made and we're going to run some thermal tests on this bad boy. So let's do it. Da, 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 da. Yes, guys, um, I've made myself an ESC test rig. This is some 12 millimeter MDF that I CNC'd, slotted together, uh, bolted the motors on and uh, put the bullets on the end of the phase wires and then realized I had the wrong sex on there, which was just stupid and then had to resolder them, put the males on there. So yeah, this is my ESC test rig. It's a pair of SAIT 63100 motors. It's the biggest motors I had in the workshop. And we're gonna be using this jig to test the Flipsky Smart ESC. We're also gonna be using this jig in some upcoming videos where we're gonna talk about some other stuff which is gonna be pretty cool. So I'm gonna go away, I'm gonna get set up for thermal testing and then I'll give you a shout in a minute. So let me show you what I've actually got set up here in front of me. I actually have an Apex NGB, one of the very first ones that was ever built, one of the uh, test ones that I've been using in my main board ever since. That is connected to the ESC, and the ESC is connected to the motors on the test rig. I have done a motor detection. Um, apparently it's a little bit better, a little bit more efficient if you do a motor detection. So I've done that and uh, I'm going to be running these motors at 50 amps each at the same time. And we're going to be looking at the VESC tool here 
and just checking the temperatures of the MOSFET and the motors. Now, one thing I don't know is that if I'm going to overheat these motors before I overheat the ESC. I hope not, but that's a possibility. I have seen people testing motors on the internet before and they normally cool the motors with a big fan and I don't have a big fan, not yet anyway. We'll see if this does overheat the motors very quickly. Although I guess with both of them running 50 amps, the ESC is gonna get hot pretty quickly. I have a GoPro looking at the motors. I have my phone recording a, a, a stopwatch just in case the we can't use the one on the best tool. And I've got the camera over there sort of looking at the general scene in case anything goes bang or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to jump into the VESC tool and we are going to go to uh, Auto Connect. It's been a while. Auto Connect, we're connected to the ESC. I'm just going to do that. Right, okay, so I've got the VESC tool here. I'm connected to the ESC and connected currently to the master ESC of the two. And uh, what we're going to do here is we are going to go down to VESC terminal and we are going to run a FOC open loop command. And we're going to send 50 amps and we're going to do it at an ERPM of 100. So if I do that, the motor started spinning the first one. So let's go over to the second one and same command, now we've got both motors spinning. Now we've got the motor spinning, we can go over to the real-time data, and if I just turn the real-time data on, you can actually see what's going on here. If we go and look at the temperature, we'll see two temperatures being recorded here. The pink one is the temperature of the motor, and the blue one is the temperature of the MOSFET. So we've got these going, we're 52 seconds into the test, and as you can see here, we get an array of data. We can actually look at what's going on. Um, first of all, we can see that the ESC is spinning these motors at a duty cycle of just 4%, despite us sending 50 amps to the motors. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't understand how it works, but basically, battery amps don't equal uh, motor amps. And you can see here, actually, that we're just pulling 1.7 amps out of the battery, and we're putting 50 amps to the motor. What you can see in the second column here is we've got the temperature of the MOSFET, which is currently 40 degrees and climbing, and the temperature of the motors, which is 27, 28 degrees and climbing also. Let's see what's going on. The FET's definitely hotter than the motor, which is good, which means that we're going to hit the limits, hopefully hit the, the FET limits before we hit the motor temperature limits. So we'll see what happens. We can say that the ESC is providing 50 amps continuous to both of these motors, so it's actually pushing 100 amps currently, which is pretty impressive for a small ESC like this. Okay, we're four and a half minutes in now, and we've got a MOSFET temperature of 57.4, and we've got a motor temperature of 43 degrees. So that MOSFET is getting quite hot, or the MOSFETs inside the ESC are getting quite hot. That aluminium substrate PCB will be doing a really good job of um, dissipating the heat across the unit itself, but there is no heat sink attached to this, so it's just performing as it is on its own. And it is turning these motors at 50 amps continuous so far. Okay, so seven and a half minutes in, we've got a FET temperature of 70 degrees and we've got a motor temperature of 58 degrees. All going well so far, seven and a half minutes is pretty good. I have got a thermometer here with a surface temperature measure and I just, I'm curious what the, um, what the temperature of the ESC is at the top. It's 41 degrees on the top side, but we know the bottom side is gonna be around about 70 degrees. I've got an issue with OBS Studio making the laptop freeze. It did this last time I tried to use it. Try and cool it down. But we are nine minutes 40 in, and it looks like we've got a FET temperature of 77 degrees, the motor temperature 69 degrees. So the motors are getting quite hot now, which is gonna limit the power eventually. And it's probably gonna do it around about the same time as the MOSFET hits thermal limits as well. It remains to be seen. Okay, so I've cut the recording short there, but this ESC did run for 10 minutes and 44 seconds at 50 amps continuous on both sides. So 50 amps to each motor continuously, um, which is pretty good. Uh, I did try to repeat the test again with higher currents. I could only get the motors to run at about 55 amps each. I did get one motor to run 65 amps, but then I couldn't get the other one to even get 60 amps. It's a bit strange every time um, the current was higher than about 55 amps on both sides, the, uh, the ESC would fault and would turn the motors off. 
which is interesting because it doesn't allow me to give a recommendation based off of peak power. I can only say that you can run this ESC at 50 amps continuous and it can do 50 amps continuous for 10 and a half minutes. So that'll be no problems. As you guys probably already know on an ESC, on an electric skateboard at least, you can't pull 50 amps continuous. Anyway, even my board that runs 100 amps um, peak power doesn't pull anywhere near a 50 amp average for a whole ride. The other thing I wanted to say was one time during the whole time testing with this ESC, I did get the uh, ESC basically locked up on me uh, as in the power button had no effect. The ESC was still working, but the power button had no effect to turn it on or off. Happened once. I don't know if that's significant, but it's significant enough to mention to you. And that's all there is to, to mention about this, really. Um, without doing any more real world testing, strapping one of these into a board and taking it for a ride, which I just don't have the time to do at the moment. And this video is already very, very delayed. And I do apologize for that flip sky. Um, then yeah, I can give this a 50 amp continuous recommendation. I reckon it'll probably go a bit higher, but I don't know, it's hard to know. It seems like at least the ones that I've got, and I have got two, because like I said, they did send me two. Seems like at least the one I've tested is solid. And I'm gonna be giving that one away. Like I said, hopefully you saw the question in the video earlier and leave your answer in the comments and I will pick one of you guys to win this, including the shipping, everything for free, which is paid for by my patrons of the channel. So thank you very much guys for supporting me for all of this time. And that's all there is to say. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.